I'm Lee Morris and this is Patrick Hall. Join us behind the scenes as we film Photographing the World with Elia Licardi. If you want more information about either of the two tutorials that we filmed, head over to fstoppers.com slash store. In this week's episode, we fly back to New Zealand to shoot the stars. We get uncomfortably close with Elia and Naomi. This isn't gonna be awkward at all. <laughs> <laughs> and Patrick decides to go camping on a sprinkler. What happened? You're doing a show like that. Trick if you're standing, as long as you're consistent about it. Yeah. So it's overweight. Yeah. And I'm just sitting here, like it's 23. But if I lean against the bag a little bit and just keep my weight there, I can actually get it to stop. So Elia gave us an interesting little tip about flying if there's two people and there's three seats, what you do is, see I've got the uh, aisle, nobody in the middle, and Patrick has a window, same over here. Aisle, nobody, window. And then the whole idea is, is that when people go in and pick their flights, they're never going to pick the middle. So you have a very good chance of having a completely empty seat, which you can use for storage. But if somebody does come in, and you're with whoever, you can say, oh, I'm with them. Would you like me to scoot over? And everyone will choose the aisle. So it's kind of the best of both worlds. For this entire trip, we knew that we would end in Queenstown and we knew that we had to finish this project with a bang and go skydiving. The only thing we had to do was convince Alaya to do it with us. I just want you on video right. saying you're ready. Oh, you're going to put the light in my <laughs> yeah. eye? Jeez. You're ready to do it. Ready to do what? I wasn't paying attention to anything you just said. We're skydiving together, all four of us. You guys are skydiving. For this tutorial. You what does what does skydiving have to do with landscape photography? Everybody wants to see you skydive. Uh, nobody, nobody wants to see me skydive. Nobody wants to see me skydive. What do you have to say to a bio? You, you have to push past the fears. You gotta just do it because you know what? You're gonna regret it if you don't. YOLO! <laughs> And I love flying in planes and helicopters, but throwing myself out of one for the sake of doing it is not one of the things that I want to do. It's something that clicks in your brain that's just like, you know what, I'm up on this ledge, I either waste $400 and I go down, or I get it over with and I jump, and it's going to be something I remember like, for the rest here's, here's of my what, life. Here's what we think of it, we're going to die at some point, right? And I'm going to die doing something extreme yep. and amazing and fun, and like, you feel alive. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Somehow, Alaya has changed the subject. <laughs> I am so good at changing the subject. And and Lee caught me, but that was my plan all along when but, he changed the subject. Can we count on you? Can we count on you, Alaya? Give me your hand. You're coming with us. Come on. That is not going to happen. Alaya. He's coming skydiving. We have been pushing him for three months now. He's coming skydiving. This is our new home here. This place looks pretty crappy, however, this place comes with 100 gigabytes of internet per day for five bucks. I've never been so excited. Let's set up our server. It's got a few cables in here. You gotta pinch as many cables as you can. You just lift, and then, all done. So this whole space will be taken over by four computers very soon. Yes, must share. And a plethora of internet to be had. Yay! Tonight we dine on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> Tonight we feast like kings. Fire. Fire. This isn't going to be awkward at all. <laughs> I love how we're in the middle of YouTube. Oh, man. Give up privacy for internet comfort and most importantly we are close to our shooting location this beautiful rainbow has perfectly framed our trailer that we're staying in here and our van absolutely beautiful so everywhere we're going we're trying to take time lapses but as you know it can be incredibly time-consuming taking these time lapses what we're doing is we're hiding them in bushes and in trees and behind rocks everywhere we go so that we can leave the camera behind for an hour 
two hours sometimes and then come back for it later. And so I'm going to pick up a camera now. It's always scary when you're going to get these cameras because you never know if somebody found it and decided to take it. Alrighty, let's pack up. Keep on moving. We were hoping to get a shot tonight of the stars over Mount Cook, but we needed a sunset shot of the mountain to blend in with the night shot. And as you can see, there's clouds uh, over the mountain. You can't really tell, but right here is the top of a really beautiful mountain. So what we've decided to do, we've got some cameras rolling, uh, time lapses, another one up there. We've got two back over there. It's also incredibly buggy. We have these uh, bug masks. I honestly thought it was kind of silly until we stepped outside of the car today. And there's some, yours looks particularly bad. Yours, you look like some sort of swamp monster or something. It's now our third night of shooting stars and time lapses of the stars and trying to figure out how to do these day to night time lapses. And uh, as soon as we think we know what we're doing, the camera does something weird or there's clouds when we need stars. And uh, so we've gotten some cool stuff, but it hasn't been quite as clear as we would have hoped. Uh, the issue is, is that the moon is getting bigger every single night and with a big moon you can't shoot as many stars, it just kind of washes out the stars. Patrick, what uh, what's it looking like? I have like seven stars in my shot now, but I don't know, I kind of want to wait it out. You need like seven million stars in your shot. No, but my exposure right now is still super blue, it's like nothing's gone black yet. I got you. If there's one thing that I've learned here in New Zealand, it's that the clouds change faster than anywhere else I've been in the entire world. So this is our first yeah, attempt right. at shooting here. Yeah. We're really not going to be worrying about getting footage of Elia working tonight. We're going to be working on getting shots for himself, and then we're going to be working on our own shots. Um, so we're going to be doing time lapses all around this church, all by the water. And I've got a camera going out of here. Here's a live. He's just shooting through uh, sunset. I have my camera going over here. Uh, every two seconds, it's doing a uh, exposure. You guys want to see the craziest tripod setup ever? There it is. <laughs> right uh, I, we needed an extra tripod. We had the tripod, but I forgot the, the head. But we had a magic arm, and I needed to get low to the ground. Long story, but anyway, what I'm doing with this shot, uh, this is the A7S camera, and uh, I'm just gonna be recording video here. I have it set to ISO auto, and I'm hoping to shoot through the sunset. The sun is now down behind the horizon, um, so this camera probably only needs to run for about 15 minutes. Filming video and time lapse during the day is pretty easy, but once the night rolls around, things get difficult pretty quickly. Sir, are you abusing children over here? He's, he messed up the camera, he twisted the lens. He, he did, he yes, came he up did. and touched it. And he didn't know the suits, I'm telling you. Oh man, my gosh. <laughs> I might have to kill him. So it's very difficult to film a liar working. Uh, obviously it's pitch black outside but it's also very difficult to show you what we're doing. Um, but we're away from everybody now, so we're not gonna wreck the other people's pictures and time lapses, so I can turn on my cell phone camera and show you what Patrick's doing here. He's got the Kessler stealth slider. Going to the camera mode, I'm gonna put this on interval timer. And then what I have here I have all these crazy modes I have to go into. So I have to hit these two buttons to go into the second mode, these two buttons to go into a pulse mode. What the pulse mode is going to do is move it very slowly so that it has time to actually take the shot without movement being introduced into it. 
so I think it's good. So, at this stage... Time to go watch movies on the iPad. While Eli was up working hard at night, I decided to go back to the van and watch some movies on my iPad. Patrick actually brought a small mattress with him so that he could lay out under the stars and watch movies outside. I'm off to do some time lapse. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> While we watched our movies, we were able to capture some really great time lapse footage, but then karma struck. What happened? <laughs> I set my bed like far away and I'm laying there looking at the stars thinking this is great. This is the greatest idea I've ever had. <laughs> and then all of a sudden I hear like gargling happening 20, 20 feet away from me. And I'm like, what is that sound? It sounds like sewage is coming up or something. <laughs> and then I hear a sprinkler close to where you set your camera up for the, the time lapse. And I'm like, oh, it's it's cool. I've shined the flashlight, it's it's not hitting me. And then all of a sudden, I was like, oh shit. The sprinkler was underneath this mattress, and it had come all the way up and instantly soaked me. Like, instantly. So I got up and jumped up, I had my shoes off. I was like so comfortable. I jump up, I pull the mattress up, and it just starts spraying everywhere. Oh, it's pretty awesome in here, but uh, there's no room, so. Did you hear what happened to Patrick? Yes, it did. <laughs> but it's also four in the morning. I've been standing out here <laughs> fighting people off the cameras and, and dealing with sprinklers, so I'm not too happy. So we've been here since 7, and it's now... 7.30, it's like 4.30. Okay, so what is that math? Is that like seven hours? Nine. Nine, oh my gosh. Yeah, so, so we've been here nine it. hours, but the last two you've been shooting a time lapse with one of the cameras. Yeah, so I've been fighting, I've been yelling at, I've been yelling at, at Chinese children. I, I mean, one, one of them ran up and grabbed my camera like eight hours ago, I had to yell at him. And I have like dozens of people setting up in front of my camera next to it, trying to bump my tripod. I'm just, it's not fun. Sprinklers start turning on, so I'm stopping sequences, putting lens, the big lens caps on taking them off, restarting the sequences, then putting the lens caps back on because the sprinklers came back on again. Running back and forth between cameras, yelling at people to get away from the cameras because they bump it. And in that, se I mean, it's just miserable. So in all that process of the last nine hours, one of the lens caps, when I started the sequence, was still on the camera. The <clears> other one got soaked, so it has all these water spots on it, so it's unusable. And the one that has the lens cap on is obviously unusable because I shot like 200 frames with the lens cap on but I think it would have gotten soaked anyway, so. Goodness. Even though everything that could go wrong did go wrong, we were actually able to salvage this lesson and Aliyah came away with a fantastic final image. <music> Subscribe to our YouTube channel so you don't miss next week's episode where we take the plunge out of an airplane in Queenstown, New Zealand.